Remember polio. It's an infectious disease that can cause permanent paralysis and even death. In the early 20th century, it was one of the most feared diseases in the industrialized world, paralyzing thousands of children every year. But polio is basically a thing of the past in the developed world, thanks to the OPV, the oral vaccine against polio. In 1988, there were cases in more than 125 countries around the world. Now, two strains of the wild polio virus have been declared eradicated, and one strain lingers on the border of two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Thanks to inoculations, cases have decreased by 99% around the globe. At a population level, vaccines are extremely important in preventing the spread of infections. They've been extremely successful in preventing death and disease. Yep, vaccines can be lifesavers. But there's a catch. The more people skip getting their vaccines, the less people are protected. And eventually, diseases can make a comeback. Most recently, the measles, that highly contagious virus that causes rashes and flu-like symptoms. Measles is a very, very infectious illness. Uh, it's probably the most infectious illness that is vaccine preventable. The U.S. was declared measles free in the year 2000. But in 2019, the country saw the worst outbreak of the virus in two decades. The same year, on the tiny island of Samoa, a drop in vaccination rates also caused thousands of people to get the contagious disease. So why the sudden spike in measles cases? A big reason for this is vaccine hesitancy, which is the reluctance or refusal to vaccinate, despite the availability of vaccines. Then there's the problem of vaccine misinformation, including the now debunked theory that vaccines are linked to autism. Misinformation is a problem so big that the World Health Organization called it a major threat to global health that could reverse decades of progress made in tackling preventable diseases. But when most people get vaccinated, we can see the true power of vaccines. These can protect us from more than 26 different diseases. But the mighty vaccine makes up only one half of the disease-fighting duo that helps people ward off germs. The other half is something every human has an immune system. It's made up of a network of organs, cells, and tissues to help fight off sickness. When a disease-causing germ makes its way into your body, it recognizes the germ as foreign. It then makes something called antibodies to help kick some germ butt. Your immune system might miss the sneaky germ the first time and you'll get sick. But your body will remember this germ and how to get rid of it. This is the power of immunity, the ability of an organism to resist a specific infection or toxin. We, as humans, can build immunity to diseases like influenza. But sometimes our immune systems just aren't enough, and that's when we turn to science. We immunize, usually by inoculation. You know, the not-so-friendly poke. Vaccines are one of the greatest and most impactful public health tools that we have, and it's because they are preventive. Vaccines can give people immunity to diseases without getting them sick first. These are made using antigens, which are killed or weakened versions of the disease-causing germ or just parts of it. When we get vaccinated, antigens enter our bodies, but our immune systems think it's a real germ coming through. The immune system then kicks it into high gear and makes antibodies to the vaccine germ. And like it always does, it remembers the germ for later. Meaning if the same germ ever comes along, your immune system will protect you from getting sick. But that's to help protect just you. Some vaccines work best when most in a certain area get them. This kind of resistance is called herd immunity. When the majority are protected against a certain disease, like the chickenpox, germs have a harder time traveling around, and the entire herd is less likely to get sick. There are those who depend on herd immunity, like the elderly and newborn babies who are too young to get their shots. But this works with only some vaccine-preventable diseases. For example, people can catch tetanus from bacteria from the environment, not from other people with the disease. Some communities might not be able to benefit from herd immunity at all because vaccines are not widely available, which is an issue in many low-income economies around the world, even in areas like the US, where people can get vaccinated in a lot of places, like in schools or at the doctor's office. How protected you are can depend on the shot you get, because not all vaccines are created equally. Most vaccines are extremely effective. For example, uh, the measles vaccine is very, very effective in preventing measles. And we know vaccines like the influenza vaccine, you know, it changes year by year. Flu vaccines can reduce the risk of flu illness by between 40 and 60%. How well these work depends on a couple things. Firstly, who is being vaccinated and their health. Doctors recommend that adults over 65 take a higher dose. 
it's likely that they'll have a better immune response than if they take the standard dose that a younger person would. Also, if the person getting the vaccine is sick or has a disease like cancer, they might not have the same response to a vaccine. The second factor is the match between the flu virus circulating and the illness the vaccine is designed to protect against. The flu vaccines of today tend to work better against influenza B and influenza A H1N1 versus influenza A H3N2 viruses. But all of these cause most human illness responsible for the flu season every year. Scientists are continuing to look at how they can create more vaccines to fight more diseases, like HIV, which has infected 75 million people worldwide, most of them living in Africa. Modern medicine has given us an extra dose of immunity to combat sickness that our ancestors died from. And hopefully one day, sickness that future generations will call ancient history. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay up to date on the latest breaking national and international news, be sure to subscribe to our channel, where we also dig into big issues around the world in our weekly series, Global News Explains.